sizing, features, preferences. It really stirs people up on the internet. Nothing gets more people jacked up than talking about equipment. So what I want to talk about today is going to be some stuff about sticks, stuff about goalie skates and sharpening, and these are my opinions. I'm not an expert by any means, although I have worn this stuff in the NHL and coached guys in the NHL, so I do have a little background in equipment, but suit yourself. Find out what you like with your equipment and choose what you want to do mod-wise sizing on your own beliefs and research it online and find out where the proper answer is for you. Goalie sticks have changed a ton since when I played. We used straight sticks, they were wooden, there was curved sticks but for the most part we used straight sticks. We had square heels and I would go through about six dozen a year when I played in the NHL. And the joke always is I asked my kids, okay back then goalie sticks were about 50 bucks each went through six dozen goalie sticks a year for the Vancouver Canucks and the Milwaukee Admirals. So how much did I pay for sticks that year? And You know, you can see the kids racking their brain trying to come up with the answer and doing their multiplication in their brain and they throw me answers, 6,000, 7,222 and then I said, in the NHL you get your stuff free. In fact, sometimes they pay you in the NHL and I always joke with the kids that my first year pro, Vaughn paid me $50,000 a year to not wear their equipment in public. So talking about sticks, your stick is your primary rebound control weapon alongside your glove. So stick sizing is crucial. Your comfort with the stick allows you to cut passes, allows you to make great passes, stop rim dumps, get stick involvement saves. So sticks are crucial to the success of a goaltender. Now back in the day when there were stand-up goalies and skate saves and stick saves from the feet, things were sized differently. Originally back in the day, you would always size your stick up on your feet in your stance. You get up skate height or step on a 2 by 4 or something in the store to make sure you're at the height you'd be on your skates. And you get down in a deep crouch and get your gloves positioned out in front of you by your knees and then you get a good sense for whether the overall paddle height was going to be comfortable for you. That's how it was done in the olden days. That's back in the days when we made stick saves while we were standing on our feet. And that doesn't happen anymore. So the first area I really want to drill down in with stick sizing is related to the paddle height. Now again, this is my opinion, and you're going to have to do your research, but my opinion is you shouldn't size your stick based on how it fits you on your feet. Since nowadays, low shots are stopped universally with a butterfly save with stick involvement if time permits. So the first consideration when you're sizing your stick is to size it in your butterfly. So when you go to the store, uh, make sure you bring your pads, get in the butterfly position and your blocker and trapper and, and see how the paddle helps you seal up your six and seven holes when you go into a block butterfly position. You want your stick blade to be flush and centered with your stick just slightly tilted back from vertical when you're in your butterfly. Now if you got too big of a paddle, you're gonna have a massive six hole. So when you're trying to get comfortable with your paddle, you wanna try to do it in the store in your butterfly position. So we don't size our paddles anymore based on how it fits you up on your feet. You size the paddle based on how it fits you in your butterfly. Now there's gonna be some trial and error with that and you're gonna to have to experiment. But if you find yourself getting lit up too much through your armpit hole, you're going to have to come down. And one thing you're going to find with the paddle height is when you're up on your feet, you'll be a lot like Flurry. He's often caught in his stance with this, the toe riding on the ice. Now obviously you don't want the toe just on the ice only when you're uh, stopping a shot. But pros have great threat awareness and they know that they got to get your stick blade flush by the time the shot gets there. So the first consideration is make the paddle fit you in your butterfly, not up in your feet like we used to back in the day. This next topic is super controversial, and I'm not trying to get anybody's panties in a bunch, but I'm going to tell you something. You can cut the shaft of your stick. I've spoken to Eli Wilson about it. You can cut the shaft of your stick. It is an old myth that will throw off the balance of the stick. From the factory, all sticks are bottom weighted anyway. So if you put your finger as a balance point of the shoulders of the stick, you're going to find that it's bottom heavy to begin with. So you can cut your shaft length. Do we want a two, a two foot long shaft? Of course not. Do 
we want to be aggressive and crazy with it? Of course not. But there's a simple rule of thumb when it comes to sizing the shaft of your stick. Get on your goalie skates, stand the stick up vertical in front of your face, and the knob should be at the height of your mouth, your nose area. Look at Carey Price. Look at the height of his shaft. Why is this crucial? Because to be an adept puck handler and a great puck handler, you've got to be able to handle the puck like a forward. And you don't see forwards with sticks sized three feet over their head. Every time I see a little goalie with a massive shaft on their stick that can't handle the puck, can't get their elbow down, I ask the parents, like, well, the guy at the sporting goods shop said I can't cut the shaft, it'll affect the balance. That is a myth, in my opinion. You can cut the shaft, and you should cut the shaft. There's a four to six inches built in any shaft, give or take, that you can adjust it without crazy affecting the balance and the mobility of the stick. So, stand the stick up in front of your face with your skates on, and the knob of the stick should be right in front of your mouth. Now, the knob is another interesting thing. Most people nowadays know that the knob, number one, from a color point of view, can't be black. Likely can't be dark either. It's in the penalty rules because the referee, the video goal the judge, could sometimes confuse it as a puck crossing a line when you're scrambling around laying on your belly. So your knob needs to be white or light colored, and that's going to be a two-minute penalty if you don't have that fixed. Another thing related to the knob is the size of it. Now, I've seen guys that have these massive uh, knobs on their stick, and they like that. But you notice you don't see forwards and defensemen with massive knobs on their stick, and there's a reason for that. They don't typically hold the stick below the knob with their top hand. They place the knob in the palm of their top hand. That allows great wrist flexibility and allows great power transfer into the puck. So if you do find yourself struggling launching pucks, I would experiment with going with a small enough knob so you can fit it in the palm of your hand. You'll get a lot more mileage out of your clears when you're doing that. And there's a secondary benefit to why you want to make sure you have a smaller knob on your stick. When you go down in the paddle position, if you've got a big knob, a puck can slide under the shaft the entire length of it because the knob is keeping it up off the ice. But if you've got a smaller knob on your stick, you can press that shaft down and the puck's not going to slide in there. Now, is that going to be a go-to save where you're purposely trying to stop pucks with the shaft of your stick from pucks sliding underneath it? Of course not. And it will save you a couple goals every year, so just bear in mind, having a big knob on your stick is going to allow the puck to slide underneath the shaft when you're in the paddle down position. So those are my thoughts on the stick. You're all going to have your taping preferences, your sizing preferences, and your beliefs and your mythology. You choose what you want to believe. And with anything, I always tell kids, assess the credibility of the person giving you the advice. On the topic of skates, things have come a long ways back from the days when the old beer leaguers, myself included, would say, I haven't sharpened my skates all year. I use dull skates. I use a goalie cut. I use a cross grind. I do this, that. A lot of mythology still around today when it comes to skates. Skates need to be worn sharp. You need a clean, sharp inside edge and a clean, sharp outside edge. The concave portion in the middle, like an upside down snowboard half pipe, is called the hollow. The deeper the hollow, the more the skate bites into the ice. You can have a super deep hollow with dull edges, and conversely, you can have a very shallow hollow with razor sharp edges. They're two different terms. Sharpness and hollow are two different terms. So, how do you decide what type of hollow you need? A lot of it's based on your edge control, your strength, your age, and the ice conditions. For me, I always used a 3 8 inch hollow, which is very aggressive. A lot of NHL goalies I know are somewhere between 3 8 even down to a quarter inch hollow. I think generally speaking, for the average goalie, if you're at a half inch or 5 8 inch hollow, you're going to probably be in pretty good shape when it comes to setting it. And put whatever you're comfortable with on the bottom of your skates, so that when you bring it in the skate shop, they know exactly what the hollow is you want. And that brings up a good point with your skate sharpening. you got to find your guy. He's the guy that sharpens your skates all the time, wherever possible. 
You don't want to go to some jockey in at some skate shop just two minutes before a tournament because you forgot to sharpen your skates because you're really praying he does a great job. And every goalie alive's got a story of trying to play a game on crappy skate sharpening jobs. The machines, all that stuff, avoid it. Find your guy you trust. And another piece of advice on the skate sharpening, always get at least one hour in at practice on a freshly sharpened pair of skates to make sure you're adjusted to them and make sure you're comfortable with how the edges are biting. And with the skate sharpening, how often do you do it? I know in the NHL, they pretty much go every time they go on the ice with freshly sharpened blades. Maybe in minor hockey, four to five hours between sharpenings would be something I would suggest. Again, that's my opinion. You need to find out what works for you. But you can't play goal with dull skates. It's like playing with rubber boots on, as Mitch Corrin used to say. You can't get across on a two-on-one with dull skates, and you end up diving and lunging. So whether you're a young goalie, old school beer leaguer like me, or a pro, you're gonna need to get used to using sharp skates. It can dramatically change your game, your transition game, your skating game, your positional game are all tied in to how well your skates are sharpened. So keep them sharpened. And one last tip, never wipe your blades off with your bare fingers. Always use a towel and keep those blades nice and dry in between sessions, but never use your hands on a skate blade. Don't ask me how I know.